Hello, this is AOI Land, and today we'll be exploring what caused the Tenerife Airport disaster. On the 27th of March 1977, two jumbo jets collided in what would become the deadliest plane crash in history. Here's why. On Sunday, the 27th of March 1977, Pan American World Airlines Flight 1736 and KLM Flight 4805 were flying to the Canary Islands with 644 people on board both of the planes. Their destination was Las Palmas in Gran Canaria. The Pan American aircraft was flying from New York with a flight originating in Los Angeles. The KLM plane was flying from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. At about two in the afternoon, a bomb was detonated in the airport, injuring one person. There was a phone call warning before detonation. Soon after, a second bomb was claimed in the airport with a second phone call warning. The authorities decided to close the airport until it was determined to be safe. All incoming flights were diverted to Los Rodeos Airport on the island of Tenerife, including both Pan American World Airways Flight 1736 and KLM Flight 4805. Both who hadn't landed yet. Flight 4805 landed first in Los Rodales Airport, taxied off the only runway and parked on the one major taxiway. Flight 1736 landed next and parked right behind the KLM jet. Three other large diverted flights landed minutes later, parking behind Pan Am Flight 1736. Captain Jakob van Zanten, the highly experienced KLM training captain, asked the airport if he could let his passengers go to the terminal. The airport tower said yes. Captain Victor Grubbs, the Pan Am captain, asked the same thing. The tower said no due to the amount of people on the KLM plane, but let the passengers go into the tarmac. At around 4.30pm, the pilots of both aircraft were informed the Grand Canaria airport had reopened. But KLM Flight 4805 had, was refuelling while obstructing Pan Am Flight 1736 from getting out, meaning the Pan Am plane would have to wait. About half an hour later, at 5pm, the KLM plane was instructed to taxi down the runway, do a 180 degree turn and await takeoff. The Pan Am plane was told to taxi down the runway after the KLM aircraft and exit on the third exit. Now it was very foggy. So the tower couldn't see the planes, and the planes couldn't see each other. The KLM plane had reached the end of the runway by the time the Pan Am was approaching the third exit. It is known that the Pan Am pilots identified the first two exits, but whether the aircraft saw the third exit is completely unknown. Then they they then planned to take the fourth exit. The KLM pilots were at this point getting ATC clearance. One of the words stated was takeoff, although it had nothing to do with actually taking off. The pilots of KLM Flight 4805 released the brakes. KLM Flight 4805 told Air Traffic Control that the plane was taking off. Air Traffic Control responded with, OK, report when ready, I will call you. The Pan Am pilots at the same time said, we're still taxiing down the runway, causing a high-pitched noise audible in the KLM cockpit, the Pan Am cockpit, and the ATC tower. The KLM pilots could only hear the OK, but the KLM first officer heard a bit of the Pan Am's message and asked, is he not clear? The captain asked, what do you say? The first officer repeated the question. The captain replied, oh yes. When hearing this, the first officer thrust the aircraft into V1, meaning the crew could no longer reject the takeoff. Finally, both planes were visible to each other and the KLM pilots pushed the nose up so hard that the rear of the aircraft hit the ground and caused a severe tail strike for about three seconds before the plane took off. The nose cleared the Pan Am, but an engine struck the upper deck and a wing destroyed the tail. The Calum broke up and disintegrated down the runway while the Pan Am, severely damaged by the impact, caught fire and eventually blew up. The collision destroyed both aeroplanes. Out of the 248 people on KLM Flight 4805, no one survived. Miraculously, there were 61 survivors on Pan Am Flight 1736. The death toll for both aircraft equaled 583, making it the worst plane crash in history. The crash was blamed on pilot error for Captain Van Zanten's part. The investigation highlighted the hissing noise 
or heterodyne just before the takeoff. Thank you for watching today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you.